Alright, we're live. Hallelujah. So, uh, thank you guys for uh, tuning in. <clears throat> if you don't know me, my name is uh, Miguel Fuentes, and I'm the campus pastor at Freedom Revival Harlem Church. And today, um, today's going to be a good day. Amen. You know, uh, we rejoice what the Lord has made today, and rejoice that the Lord will take care of us during this time of need. Um, today's message, we're going to be talking about being faithful to God. But right now, give yourself maybe 10, 15 minutes just to worship the Lord, uh, sing songs out of your heart. You know, it's very, very important, you know, not to just play your popular worship song. You know, the best part of being a Christian is that you sing spiritual songs unto the Lord. And, 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 and I learned so much that God allows me uh, and allows you to use your heart, use your, you know, uh, whatever, the, you know, I would say, you know, out of the bunch of our heart, the mouth speaks. And uh, God allows us to, to speak uh, His praises to Him. So, let's give yourself 10 to 15 minutes, especially myself, just to worship the Lord. And you can pray during this time. You can uh, you know, sing in tongues and whatnot, or pray in tongues, or whatever. The Lord leads. Uh, I believe that personally that God doesn't have any... Uh, structural walls per se, but let's give yourself some time to worship the Lord right now. So, let's get started. Thank you, Lord. You're so glorious, Lord. Great is our faith in you, so God. God, you are everything. God, you are everything. Judah, Lord. Lord, you are, uh, Lord, you are the Lamb of God that was slain on the cross. And you paid the price for my sins and our sins so that we can have a relationship with you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, 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 we thank you so much for what you have done, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Alright, y'all. Who's ready for the word? Amen? Who, who's ready for the word? So, again, uh, today's message, we're going to be talking about being, so, or be faithful to God, or being faithful to God. Uh, turn with me in the book of Lamentations, chapter 3. Lamentation, chapter 3, uh, verse 23. And it reads, They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. So I just read verses 23 to 25. Now, uh, let's read in Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Uh, verses uh, 22 and 24. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, 
patient, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and self-control. Uh, against such there is no law. Those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passion and lusts. So, what does it take to be a faithful servant unto the Lord? Well, you got to understand that we are in a relationship with God. And that, that if we're going to have a relationship with God, it requires us, me and you, and God. And yes, God is a faithful, sorry, God is the faithful God, but... Are you faithful to God? Which means that, you know, not only... Because we got to understand that we don't serve a God who just does one... Uh, uh, what do you call it? A one-off relationship. No, we serve a God who uh, is a covenant God. That we need to be a part of that covenant. Uh, we, we see in... Uh, in, in in the book of Deuteronomy, we see uh, in I think in church uh, sorry in chapter 20, 28 that talks about the blessings and curse uh, if you're gonna keep his commandments or keeping his his covenant or not. And so it's, it's very very important to understand that God does a lot of if if and then statements because God doesn't play games. Okay, God doesn't play games. If you if you're gonna serve the Lord, you better serve him one hundred percent. Because if if you if you uh you know, slack off, well not really slack off, but but you walked away from him, you you, you don't want to do anything with God. God's gonna cut you off, man. And especially with lukewarm Christians right now, we 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 need uh you know those of you who are lukewarm Christians, better better choose quick. Because God, not, God is not playing games with you. If you're going to serve God, serve God 100%. If you don't, don't do it. Because, see, be, being a born-again uh, Christian is not for the faint of heart. Being a Christian is not about uh, doing the American church thing that, that you know, play with God and, and, and sorry, play with Playing with God on, on Sundays and living like hell for the rest of the week. God ain't playing games. See, that's why we got to understand what does the relationship with God looks like. So, understand that, you know, we got to be a part of that covenant. Not just, you know, God doing all the covenant work, you know. See, are, are we going to keep God's law in our hearts? Are we going to keep the word of God in our hearts? See, are we going to be faithful to him? Or are we just going to, you know, pray to God every tragedy that is going on in our lives? See, that God doesn't work that way. See, God, if, you know, it's, it's like it's like marriage. When when uh, Christ says, sorry, uh, forgive me, um, uh, when when Paul says that, uh, here, here's a good example in uh, Ephesians. Ephesians. Chapter five says in verse twenty-two through twenty-five, wives. Be submissive to your own husbands, as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, just as Christ is the head and Savior of the church, which is his body. But as the church submits to Christ, so also let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. You see that there? That's covenant. That, 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 that's kingdom talk, as, 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 uh, as, as my life coach says. 
See, you gotta understand, marriage is a two-way relationship. Same thing with our relationship with God is a two-way covenant. Not, no, we, we, we don't see husbands being by himself without his wife. We, 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 we don't see it. Either you are going to be with your wife for eternity, or not eternity, but like for the rest of your life, or you just you know going you know loving your wife but going going toward other women you know mm -hmm. and it's it's bad and that uh, you break the covenant with your wife and end up with divorce okay so you gotta understand it is very very important to really have that relationship with the Lord having that two way communication it's called prayer. If, 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 if you want to be more, uh, well, I'm not, I'm not going to say more advanced, but more, um, more power uh, by the Holy Spirit, you got to fast and pray. That, that, that's, that's, that's how it is in the kingdom, man. So understand that the kingdom of God is at hand. Is that, you know, the kingdom of God is everything, okay? Uh, when we read the Word of God from Genesis to Revelation, all, all this is the kingdom talk. All this is the kingdom talk. Why? We, you know, as believers, we are not uh, supposed to be a part of this world system. We are supposed to be the, uh, a part of the kingdom of God. See, we, we belong to Jesus Christ, and the world hates us because we belong to Him. So how faithful are you is my question. How faithful are you to being his faithful servant? My good and faithful servant, uh, I think it is I think the end of Revelation chapter three. Number two, we must do the work of the ministry. See, if we're gonna be faithful to God. We got to do the work of the ministry. Now, it doesn't mean that you go out of, uh, like myself, preaching and teaching or, uh, or um, uh, having a prophetic ministry or apostolic ministry or, or all that stuff. But you should be in a ministry business to go into your job or go into school or go into, um, go, go be a missionary or go, uh, you know, go in, in the uh, medical field, or or be a professor, or 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 a uh, or, or be a part of a, a sport team or whatnot, and then serve the Lord with that because you are serving the people uh, with your skill sets and all, and also you you know you can volunteer your time to be an usher. To be a deacon, to be a you know a volunteer pastor, or or you know you know all that good stuff, and and you know God allows us to go through a lot of trials and tribulations to be a part of the ministry. And, you know, the, being a minister is not easy. Being a uh, uh, being a, a landscaper is not easy. It, you know, it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of, of, of hard work to to move forward into the kingdom of God. Amen. And so, you know, uh, uh, work, sorry, faith, uh, faith without works is dead, according to James. So if we, if we take that scripture into context, it, uh, I remember in Luke, I said, let me read in Luke chapter 8. And I and I preached this sermon this uh, this afternoon, uh, Luke chapter eight. Luke chapter eight, uh, verse twenty one. He answered them, "My mother and my brothers are the sorry, yeah are are these who heard the word of God and do it." See, we ought to be doers of the word. Especially in James says it. We got to be doers of the word. No matter how 
hard a job it is, we gotta serve. Uh, we gotta serve, you know, in in a worship team. Maybe serve at a if you if you are a uh, if you are involved in a Christian rock or Christian metal uh, band, you serve them by your by your talents of either your vocal talents or your guitar talent or your bass talent, your drum talents. You know, God can use people to serve other people for the glory of God and they will, you know, eventually preach the good news of Jesus Christ. We, you know, we all should be in ministry. We all should be in a ministry business. We, we all should be about the kingdom business. Amen. And so God allows us to go through, um, you know, just, you know, figuring out what your challenges and what your skills are so that you can serve a company or a band or a sports team to bring the glory to Jesus Christ. And we ought to bring glory to Jesus Christ for what we have done. See, number three, if, you know, being a one-sided covenant, meaning that God is not your babysitter. God is not, well, uh, of course, we uh, sometimes God, you know, hold, hold, hold our hand and walk, and walk us through a tough time or a hardship. But, but God allows us to grow in us by the Holy Spirit. To not, you know, not, not, you know, God is not our babysitter, basically. Uh, what, what I'm saying, you know, God allows us to go through trials and tribulations to grow us and, 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 and to mature us uh, in, a, in a way. Because uh, they can't stay a baby Christian forever. That just can't, cannot be. If you, if you want to grow closer to the Lord, you know, you got, you got, you know, you got to have, um, uh, how to say, you're going to have a, 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 a desire to seek the Lord on your own. You know, your pastor is not going to be your babysitter uh, feeding you, uh, spoon-fed you the Word of God. No, you got to be willing to go through the Word yourself and, and to study the Word to show yourself approved to the point that you are growing in maturity in the Lord and to really understand the power of the Holy Ghost in you so that you can transform uh, a city or a town in Jesus' name. So God is not your babysitter. God is there to help you grow, grow, mature, and 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 make more disciples in Jesus' name. You know, this is not a hard covenant, folks. This is not a hard uh, uh, covenant that God establishes in the beginning of the time. And so you know, it is it, it, mind-boggling to see, well, brother. Um, I love your passion, but I'm 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 just scared of being being more mature. Well, if 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 you're not, you know, and I respond to this: if you're not going to be willing to be more mature in Christ, what's the whole purpose of being a Christian? If you're not willing to let God help you grow and and letting God help you to see things in the spirit, you know, and, and God will um. You know, basically, uh, God will, um, how do you say, uh, God will try and just help you get through whatever situation that you are in. It's not easy. It's not easy. So, uh, I do have one more point to say. Is that a faithful servant always obey God and keep his word. Jesus says in John chapter 15, if, if you abide in me, in my words, you will be my disciples. That's all. If, if you truly want to be his disciples, if you truly want to be Christ's disciples in your life right now, Obey God. Whatever God calls you to do, do it. And keep His word. It's that simple. 
Keep the Word of God in your heart. Keep the Word of God in your heart. I think this is the most crucial part of, of having a relationship with God is that you begin to move in a mighty way when you are in line not only with the scriptures but in line with the word and, and sorry uh in a line with the will of God in your uh in your life. This is this is really crucial if you if you want to grow closer to the Lord. It, it is very very crucial to begin to 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 see men uh to see manifestations of the fruit of the spirit in your life when you walk with him when you uh, obey the lord when you uh keep his word and study his word and, and and to make more disciples in Jesus name i think this is the the best part about the christian life folks or the kingdom lifestyle i should say is that we begin to seek god to the point where people are being transformed and the power of God began to transform people's lives and, and people would be uh, and, and, and many people will get delivered and many people will 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 um will be healed in Jesus name many many people will um receive prophetic words or word of knowledge or word of, word of wisdom and you know Sharing the good news of Jesus Christ, man. I mean, God is all powerful. God is all knowing. God is all, you know, every good. God is everywhere. So, um, we always got to remember that we always got to be faithful to Him, no matter no matter the cost. Yes, and there will be costs. Uh, during discipleship, there will be costs. That you will have to follow the Lord Jesus Christ with all your heart to the point where they will be able to uh, to to finish the race strong and to endure until the end. So I think that's the word that I got from the Lord um, uh, this afternoon as I was taking a nap. Praise God and. Uh, God gave me this word to share. Um, so let's go ahead and close with a little bit of 15 minutes worship and praise as we close. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I hope you guys enjoy the service. Um, and I do too. Praise God. I hope you guys have a great, great uh, evening and a great, uh, I would say, a great week uh, as you, you know, as you return back to work or, or you still staying at home. But you know, you know, just have a great week. Um, may God bless you. May God keep you. And uh, I hope that you enjoy this message. As you know, as, you know, you know, if you can. You know, if the Holy Spirit leads you to uh, give like a confirmation of what I'm saying, go ahead and feel free to comment down below. And uh, yeah, let, let's share what the Lord is doing in, in our lives. Amen. We, we should not be ashamed of, of, of sharing what the Lord is te teaching us during this time. So again, comment down below if, you, if the Lord leads you to say something or whatnot. So. Again, thank you guys for watching. May God bless you, and I'll see you guys again next time.